If the words skibbity toilet mean nothing to you and make you cock an eyebrow up and say, did you just say skibbity toilet? Or if you learned about it against your will, then you've probably seen the Disney Channel original movie, Brink. Before Disney's basketball musical movie, its surfing movie, and its jump rope movie was its rollerblading movie. Brink was Disney Channel's third original movie and aired on August 29th, 1998. I was two at the time, so I wasn't able to make it to the premiere because I was busy doing other things. But 1998 wasn't the only year Brink was on the air. No, no, no. <laughs> Brink aired on Disney Channel until 2016. And if you think the idea of a rollerblading movie sounds odd, it's important that you know rollerblading was the coolest thing a teenager could be doing in the 1990s. Unfortunately, the extreme sport version of rollerblading, aggressive inline skating, which this movie is based on, did flop, which is unfortunate. I do not want to understate how important this film is to the 1990s cultural zeitgeist. Like Complex Magazine ranked Brink number one as the best Disney Channel original movie and I'm pretty sure complex is like a pretty cool brand right like it's cool there are only two times in my life that I've experienced gender envy the first is I deeply wanted to be a Chicago Bull in the 1990s more specifically Michael Jordan more specifically this photo and second is to be a California teen skater boy and also the 1990s. And that is 100% because of this movie. The other day I was recommended a clip from Brink on YouTube and I watched it and I thought, wow, this doesn't look like how I remember it at all. Did they tamper with the footage? And then it got me thinking, man, I don't think I've seen this movie in about 20 years. Is it bad? I had to find out for myself. Our story starts with Andy Brinker, who goes by Brink. Oh, that's the name of the movie. Brink loves to blade with his besties, the soul skaters, who <laughs> don't blade for money. They blade from the heart. It's important for everyone to know the intro of this movie is the blueprint for every single Disney Channel original movie ever made. The breakfast, the chaos, the music. My parents don't get me. I gotta clean my room. Parents, man parents. Brink needs to meet up with the rest of the soul skaters so that they can snag a spot at the Venice Beach Bowl, which is the hot spot for skating. They miss the bus. Uh, lateness? Dude, chornis. My mom made me clean my room before I could leave. Now, why did he run instead of skate? Beats me. Brink convinces the gang to skate instead of take the bus to the bowl. And I don't know why they didn't do it in the first place. I would just imagine they would skate everywhere because it's faster than walking. Wait, 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 wait. You're not thinking about skating to the beach, are you? Why not? Jordy, 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 Jordy. That's my name, dude. Jordy, Jordy, Jordy. When you woke up this morning, did you say to yourself, today I'm going to talk or today I'm going to skate? I promise I didn't pick this movie because my name's in it. Come on, guys. You know me better than that. Gabriella, Pete, and Jordy all skate their way to the bowl. Come on, guys. Let's get some speed. I know they're rushing to the pit because they want to be the first ones there. And apparently it's hard to get a spot. So they got to get there early in the morning. But when they show up, nobody's there. Five seconds later, there's like this entire crowd of the most 90s people you've ever seen in your life. Like, where'd they come from? <laughs> Watch that back leg. At first I was like, why is he bossing them around like that? And then I realized he's the team captain. So that does make sense. And this is also where we meet probably one of the most heinous villains in cinematic history, Val. Say, you know what, Val? I don't think you skate so good anymore, man. I don't know, maybe you should back both competitions. Nah, I'd have to get back all the school stuff. I love trash talk in Disney movies because high school kids will say some out-of-pocket stuff. Obviously, they're not allowed to do that in a Disney movie. They're just like, hey man, maybe you shouldn't skate anymore. Why would I want to give up all of this cool stuff though? Like, I'm not gonna give up skating actually. <laughs> so Val is the captain of Team X-Blades and they're the team with all of the fame and fortune. They're in magazines, they got press, they got gear, and they're sponsored skaters. Ooh, sponsored skaters. Big deal. Being a sponsored skater is a big deal, which brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Scentbird. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription that lets you choose a new designer fragrance every month 
for just $17. Something about me, I have a very hard time trying new perfumes because I get so nervous that I'm not gonna like it. Wait, what if this doesn't smell good on me? What if it doesn't last a long time? These are answers that I need, but I do not wanna commit to a whole bottle. Scentbird luckily has solved this issue that I have imposed upon myself. They have over 600 perfumes and colognes to try. After you choose what fragrance you want, then you get a 30 day trial of it, which is perfect for me because I'm picky with my scents. And you can use the code Jordy for 55% off, which would make it just over $7 for your first month if you live in the US or Canada. So I received three fragrances for Scentbird and they come in this cute little pouch. Take it out, bada bing, bada boom. The cases for this are so nice. So your perfume doesn't leak in your purse. I once spent a lot of money on a perfume and I had it in my purse and it leaked at a concert and I smelled like the inside of a JC Penny in 1998. So you can unlock it and then you do a little spritz. The first scent I got is Deep Dark Vanilla by DS and Durga, which is like a peppery, spicy vanilla. Then I have Tommy Bahama's St. Bart Seascape. I'm a lemon girl first and foremost. This truly is the most fresh, delicious, like I wanna drink it. I wanna open the bottle and I wanna drink it. And if I did wanna do that, you could actually. <laughs> to open the bottles, you literally just unlock it and then you can pull at the bottom here, take out your scent and then you got your bottle. That's a lot of perfume. And then the last fragrance I got, which is my favorites. I wish I was being dramatic about how much this changed my life. This is Plur Missing Person. I never thought that I would replace my perfume I've been wearing every single day for four years until I smelled this. I'm a musky woody girl. This smells like who I thought in my brain I would become in my lifetime. This is her in this bottle here. Again, you can use the code Jordy for 55% off your first month. Let's go back to talking about rollerbladers. All skateboarders aren't really wusses, are they? They all can't be no talent, no skill, half smart, inline skating wannabes. Am I right? Personally, I don't think that at all. All right? But that's exactly what those guys over there do. This is interesting to me because I was wondering, were the girls fighting? Did skaters and bladers not like each other? Was there some... <laughs> You know, also it's just sort of funny to hear like, you're an inline skater wannabe. <laughs> like maybe that was like an actual insult back in the 1990s, but now it just doesn't hit because inline skating kind of flopped. <laughs> I wonder if it's like how pickleball and tennis is right now. Like pickleballers are sort of taking over tennis courts and like the tennis people are like, get those pickleballers out of here, you know? <laughs> Ooh, they still make it look cool. I begged my parents for rollerblades and safety gear. And as soon as I got it, I went to the skate park, was strapped up, elbow pads, wrist pads, knee pads. My first attempt to go down like this little thing, it was like a little, it was just a little ramp. It really wasn't a ramp at all. I fell was skidding down the entire skate park on my elbows and on my knees. And I was so embarrassed that I got up, bladed over to my mother and ate a sandwich. That was the last time I went to a skate park actually. Yo, what's up fam? It's just not normal, that's all. Throughout this movie, it feels like Brink's dad regrets the choice of having children. When Brink's happy, he's annoyed. No one should be that happy all the time. When Brink's sad, he's annoyed. It's just not normal, that's all. Nobody's that unhappy all the time. He doesn't really like his child, it feels like. So Val gets back at the Soul Skaters and throws Peach shoes on the little telephone wire thing. And this is kind of iconic. This is kind of cool. I don't know why I love seeing shoes on telephone pole wires. I think it always looks cool. So to get back at Val, you know, they're going back and forth, messing with each other a little bit. They put worms in his sandwich. I watched that and I literally almost threw up this time around. Ugh. Ugh. Just, ugh. That was crazy that they did that. Is there a problem, Val? No. Um, I thought I saw a bug or something. Well, get over it. I don't understand why the teacher was mad at Val. I just feel like she had an out for him the entire time and she was just looking for a reason to be mad at him. I just know teachers have secret beef with kids. You. Us. Right now, out back. We race. You win, but we stop giving you beef. You lose, it's like open season on your butts. Val is always like, why use our fists when we can use our blades? Let's race. <laughs> so Val challenges Brink to a race, but there is no skating allowed in school. Come on, you know there's no skating allowed at school. Yeah, I knew you couldn't step up. What did I tell you? No hard. No. That's one thing you can't say to our boy Brink, 
because having heart is kind of his thing. We go side by side. When you get to the relay point, you gotta slap the next guy's hand. Or girl's hand. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna say this because it's gonna be a constant theme throughout the film. I like Pete. And I'm gonna knight him a girly. So congratulations, Pete. You have been knighted. I'm wearing my green ring. Shh, nobody talk about it. You don't talk much. Get that? I like that in a man. Go! Ah! Enemies to lovers? Girl. <laughs> Gabriella really is so cool. I wanted to be just like her when I was eight, but I do blame her for my basketball shorts era. <laughs> I think wuss was the only insult that was approved for this movie because it's used, I feel like at least 14 times. I'm gonna count in the editing, but. Wusses, are they? Man, you are such a wuss. Unfortunately, Boomer on X Blades gets hurt and Brink, of course, helps him because what does he have, everyone? He has heart. So Brink and everyone else get suspended for the day, just for the day, but it was the first day of class and Papa is not happy. Please. What was it? Four and a half hours into the new school year before being suspended? Why are they not wearing seatbelts? Also, why is Brink not wearing his chin strap half the time? It stresses me out as a mother. I am a mother of one. Okay? So, don't worry about these things. Brink overhears his parents talking about some real life issues. Don't worry about the money. We're gonna be okay. Hey, the mortgage isn't due to the first of the month. We'll figure it out. I couldn't get out of my head how this shot looked exactly like a soap opera that I would watch while I was waiting for my appointment at a dentist office. Like exactly like it. Copy paste. Hey, check it out. Jerkweed's at two o'clock. Jerkweed? I'm putting that right next to Rat Bastard in the old noggin. Guess you're about Boomer? Yeah. How long's he gotta be out? A couple of weeks. Means there's an open spot on the team. Like we're gonna try for Team X Blade. <laughs> <laughs> like any of you have the talent. I'm telling you so that you grommets know you're not invited. I'm sorry, Val has such fan behavior. You're just gonna go up to them and be like, yeah, Boomer's out. And we are looking for someone to fill a spot. But we don't want you guys on the team. I make a lot of money. What could be sweeter? I think you'll show. I just feel like high schoolers throughout time learned about reverse psychology and then tried to use it like way too often. And then so often kids would call out other kids and be like, are you using reverse psychology on me right now? Which is exactly what Val was trying to do to Brink because he wanted Brink on the team. And unfortunately it worked because Brink wants that sweet, sweet cash. There's no way I'm gonna let you on the team. Yeah, well there's no way I wanted to be here. I need the money. Oh, what for? Grandma needs a new kidney. This little John bothers me a lot. He has extreme menacing energy that radiates through the screen. So how about you turn around and soul skate on out of here? Fine. Wait a second. You got 30 seconds. Street run. One chance. Vel's tactic of bullying Brink to be on the team unfortunately works, and our boy slays his audition. And I want to call it an audition, because that's kind of fun. Why a tryout when it can be an audition? The world's our theater. I feel like the writers were in the writing room being like, okay, what is every characteristic of a sleazy businessman? Okay, perfect. Now let's include all of those characteristics in this character. I'm gonna need you 24-7 for like photo shoots, promos, industry shows, stuff like that. Okay? Okay. <laughs> Well then. Shouldn't the parents be consulted here? Huh? Parents? The parents know about this? My parents? Yeah, they're down with this? Your parents are cool with this? Oh, my parents, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> All right, okay. Oh, well, I guess this is how things worked in the 90s. So Brink is officially on x Blaze, and he has not told his friends yet. Rah, rah, raggy. <laughs> So Brink brings up the x Blaze opportunity at dinner. With Dad not working around here and stuff, I think that maybe it's time I got a job to help out around here. And the dad's like, no, you should work a job. What kind of a job are you talking about? Well, I know these kids make extra money skating. Skating? Yeah. You see, they got on a sponsored team. And then the sponsor pays them to wear their gear and stuff. But it can't be skating. It has to be something else. No. But dad... I'm thinking like the Carney's fixing. No. And what? 
So now Brink is living this double life, skating for X-Blades, hiding it from his parents and friends, working at the dog groomer that his dad decided would be a good idea for him to do, and still practicing with the soul skaters. Hey, did you guys hear? Val found someone to replace Boomer. Yeah, I heard it too. I heard, I heard the guy was a big guy. Big guy, like, like Kareem, I think. I don't care how good he is. He isn't better than my man here. <laughs> Although Brink did try telling his friends at one point, he didn't try super hard. There's something I gotta tell you right now, man. Wait a second. Now, Peter! I'm getting off! I'll see you at school tomorrow. Wait, wait, Pete! Pete! God. He just thought, hey, I'm not gonna tell my friends. I'm just gonna replace Boomer, do this competition, and be back for the championships. Hey, you okay, man? It's only a cake. Just know that if there's baking in a Disney Channel movie, it's gonna look like a bag of flour exploded all over. And I'm gonna admit when I baked as a child, I would also put flour on my face because how else was I gonna prove that I worked hard with my baking? You know, <laughs> did anyone else do that? I gotta talk to you guys about the invitation. Oh yeah, man, we're gonna have a good time, huh? Sweet. Hey, Betty Crocker. Val keeps following and harassing Brink. Fan behavior. And honestly, at this point, I feel like it would have been better just to tell his friends. Could you be any more of a jerk? Is that what you think? You think I'm a jerk? Uh, come on, Val, we're working here, man. Do you think I'm a jerk? No. Oh. Do you think I'm kind? Do you think I'm handsome? Do you like my hair? Thank you. I don't know, Val's kind of obsessed with Brink. I have a theory that he has a crush on Brink, come on. Someone had to say it. <laughs> I also just don't know why Brink doesn't think that eventually Val's gonna expose this whole thing to his friends. I don't know. Since he's got this job at the dog groomer, I guess he doesn't really need to be doing X Blades, but he is. <laughs> the dog was just standing there, like being a good dog, and this man's just going crazy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The dog's like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> So because of his new double life, Brink's friends are getting the shite end of the stick. And he's always late to practice. They're getting a little bit annoyed. They're getting a little bit upset. But it's finally competition day and Brink is sick. Hey man, I came as soon as I could. How you feeling? And so the soul skaters cannot go to the competition because they're down a guy. Because you need four people to compete. I can't make it to the invitational today. I'm sorry. Hey, no big. Just feel better, okay? And he's like, oh, guys, don't go to the competition. Don't, yeah, don't go to the competition to watch the people that we're going to be competing against in the championship. Don't do that. But they do, of course. We should at least check out the invitation. We'll see who our competition is. And I feel so bad for Pete. I feel so bad for him. Hey, come on, guys. Brink said we should session. The color grading got a little crazy here. <laughs> what the hell? Kid. He doesn't look Korean. That's because he's not. I think Brink saw Big Daddy and thought that he would be invisible with sunglasses on, but it's pretty obvious it's him when he's competing. I got a little something, huh? It's a bonus for winning. What if the guy just gave him like three bucks? <laughs> Keep the change. Good work. Here's three bucks. His friends are pretty upset. I can't explain everything. Can you explain how you lied to us? How you bailed out on us so you could join Team X-Blades? Do you have any idea how many times I stuck up for you? Shoot, this is a tough watch because Pete's a very loyal friend. Come on, wait! Oh, all right, playtime's over. I say we get together tonight and over some drills for the championship. Ah, uh, the classic lack of communication in a Disney movie that infuriates me every single time. I don't know why he didn't just tell them that his family needed the money. I'm sure they would understand. Well, go check out the downhill course. See you can do it. How about me? Okay, if I sit down. Wait, wait. So Brink and the Soul Skaters break up and he's kind of depressy a little bit. The championship has three parts, street, Vert and downhill. This is gonna be the downhill course. Yes, Grace. 
Guess they'll let anybody skate here. What are you guys following us? Val has so much nerve to be saying this because he's been borderline stalking them the entire movie. They end up doing another race offered up by Val, but this time it's Brink versus Gabriella. You against Gabriella. Whoever loses has to take off. And you better not lose, man. And I so desperately wish I would be good at last words. Like, Gabrielle is so good at it. Gabrielle, please don't do this. When you woke up this morning, did you say to yourself, today I'm gonna talk, or today I'm gonna skate? Using his own words against him? Oh, that's good. Yeah, I can't think on my toes like that. I stutter a lot. So they're racing on this road with not a single vehicle in sight until magically a gardening truck just appears out of nowhere and Gabriella hits the sweet jump. But I wonder, does hitting a sweet jump make you go faster? I know it does in Mario Kart when you can do the little move when you land you go faster and you speed up, but does actually like jumping make you go faster? I don't know the physics behind it. So if somebody knows, please let me know. Like is real life actually like Mario Kart or does jumping off a ramp not help? actually. So this is when Val pulls one of the most villainous acts in cinematic history. It's a big turn just before Katner stay on the outside. He puts rocks in the road and despite Brink's warning. I was genuinely shocked because this man could have killed her. Val just has some sinister energy. That kid should not be walking free on the streets. So Gabriella gets torn up and finally he realizes, hey, maybe this isn't worth it. And Brink goes to visit Gabriella. And I'm sorry, this sounds like a great song. And also for some reason the audio got really bad here. I don't, <laughs> it's just all over the place. It was hard to like get in the mood of like sadness for me. The doctor says she needs to stay in bed for a while. Well, I'm glad she's okay. <laughs> Maybe you should come in and say hello to her. Oh yeah, she's just sleeping. This is a really good time to visit. <laughs> Finally, Brink explains to Gabby that his family needed the money. That's why he joined the X-Blades team. My family really needed the money. We all need the money, Brink. Oh, that's not the reaction I thought she was going to have. You're just another sellout. It is interesting. I do feel like the sellout concept has kind of died. I mean, this is when you could buy a really nice home for like $200,000. I remember when YouTube first started and people started taking sponsors. Ooh, the gossip forums got nasty saying sellout and all sorts of, of things of that nature. Anyway, just an interesting tidbit of how our culture has shifted a little bit. And I think it's because being a human being these days is... Oh, it's expensive. I'll tell you that for free. Hey, I'll give you that for free. It's expensive to live. Hey, Dad. What are you doing? Just, um, looking at my old skates. Dad's frontal lobe finally snaps into place, and he gives Brink some good advice and a bit of dad lore, which we always love to see. I didn't listen to you, Dad. I tried out for the sponsor team. But I told you no. I guess it wasn't just for the money either. I wanted to be a part of Team Max Blades. I wanted to have my picture in every magazine. I wanted to be somebody. Okay, so I was a little bit shocked because I genuinely thought he was just doing it for extra money. He was in it for that sweet, sweet clout. <laughs> he fooled me too. You are defined by the company you keep and how well you keep it. Not by what you just happen to do. So maybe this is a better lesson than I thought. Don't do it for the fame. Do it for the heart of it. The construction foreman is what I do, not who I am. Okay, don't let the things you love define you. I kind of love that. Yeah, that's really actually quite, quite a good lesson, Dad. I'm team Dad now. Something happened. Something changed in his brain really quickly. <laughs> You put the gravel on the road. You realize you could have killed her? Man, you are such a wuss. You are so dead. Hey, 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 not today, man, not today. I didn't think you'd turn on me. That's your problem, man, you don't think. If Boomer has zero fans, I'm dead. 
the sword unsheathing sound of blades grinding is so funny to me. <laughs> Makes me giggle every time. Oh, this is just great. Now we don't even have the right gear to compete. This is a joke. You guys ever think of getting a sponsor? Where did he come from? Like two seconds after this shot with nobody in it, he just pops up. Hello? Did you really throw that vanilla shake in Val's face? Chocolate. How did it feel? It was cool and it was so sweet. <laughs> the gang's back together and they're ready for the aggressive inline skating championship. <laughs> And this is kind of a big deal. Hey, check it out, ESPN. There's magazines, there's photographers, there is press. It's the whole nine. Is that how you say it? The nine yard? It's nine yards. The whole nine yards. We start with the street comp and Gabriella slays. Uh, 93. Good job, queen. Bring kind of flops. 89. And Val kills it. Top one so far today. Stylish fly yeah. fish. Nice today, a score of 97. I know I say a lot of things in pop culture belong in the Museum of Modern Art, but the montages do. Like, that's just true. That's just true. I've always wanted to do one. So I did. <laughs> so we got the half pipe. I don't know the proper word for this. I can't remember. The Vert event is next. But Brink slays because he got some really, really good, insightful advice from his little sister, Katie, who's also in Smart House and plays the same character. I give you some advice. Skate better. Skate better. But in order to make it to the downhill final competition, they need to be in the top two. And right now, they're number three. So Pete needs to land his 540. Hasn't landed it the entire movie. So the tensions are high. And the team is really on his back right now. And because I'm a Pete stan, I was nervous. Peter Calhoun is going to need the run of all runs. Here comes, here comes the 540. So we're so proud of Pete. Good job, Pete. It's going to be one skater from Pup and Sons versus one skater from X Blades on a treacherous downhill race. Winner takes all. This guy just booing Val. <laughs> Bring back booing. We don't boo like we used to. Okay, so here we are. The downhill. The big kahuna. Val versus Brink. And we have one of the most iconic scenes in Disney Channel cinematic history. I remember watching this scene for the first time and being so tense. Just telling my screen, come on, Brink. You can do it, Brink. <laughs> he can do this. <laughs> I wonder if holding your skate in the air is necessary. Like, do they have to do that as a part of the rules? Or is it just like for some flair? The cameraman was doing his best here, but it is bumpy. He's like, <laughs> I remember watching this and I was like, Brink, Brink, get up. Come on, Brink, get up. <laughs> so after Brink tumbles, he has to cook. Val keeps on bullying him. <laughs> Okay. Why does Brink keep doing this? Because he has heart. I never did have the brains to finish a race and someone was down. Guess not. That's what I was counting on. <laughs> that boy is pure evil. Like, I was genuinely so mad at this part. Still. I love that this is the point in the story where you can maybe see some character development with the villain and they're like, you know, maybe I am just in it for the money and the fame and glory and, you know, I started this because I love it. Nope. Not Val. Val said I'm evil forever. And then we have probably one of the most iconic shots in sports film history. Both skaters totally exhausted. Brink wins. I don't know. What's a cool way to say? Brink hits the... Brink... 
Break is in first. Ah, and he won it with heart. And I just love that Val showed no character development. And it's honestly more realistic than other Disney movies where the villain just randomly is like, oh no, I've developed empathy now, weirdly. You got it! Money, sponsorship, you know how the drill works. Come on, what do you say? Hey, we got money, fame, glory. You want it, Brink? And Brink being like, uh, uh, uh. Nah, nah, nah. No. And scene. Freeze frame. And then amazing song. Come on, Brink. Jump it, grind it. And that was our film. For those of you who've never seen Brink, I'm glad that I can provide you some context to one of the most important films ever created. And for those of you who have seen Brink and were here for just a little trip down memory lane, I hope you enjoyed it. I think this movie honestly really holds up and I think it's literally a perfect cultural relic of the 1990s. I mean, I didn't understand what they were saying half the time, which is probably what my parents think about me when they're watching me make these videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are interested in more content from me and want to support me a little bit, I have YouTube memberships, which is kind of like Patreon for YouTube. And you can just get more content if you want. And I do have some pretty cool people who are a part of it. And you can have a little frog next to your name when I stream, which is kind of cool. That is all from me. And thank you once again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Check out the links below if you're interested in and smelling good. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.